Hey guys, this is Eric from ET Figure Unboxing, and in this video, we're going to take a look at an Ultraman special version. So this guy is like a crossover between Ultra Act and SH Figure Arts, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you already know what to expect. Um, this is not the first time they released a the figure. Um, this is just like a special version, which includes the head sculpt. I don't know anything about the manga or the anime. I watched the older Ultraman though, but I still prefer Kamen Rider. Anyways, I just like the design on this guy, and I might just go all in for the line, depending, because they're all very expensive. And I think the only one that was regular release is the um, the first one without a head sculpt. But anyways, here's the front of the box. I like the art. And here's the left of the box. Here's the right of the box. I believe they're the same design. Here's the back of the box. And he does come with a really cool special effect parts that the first one didn't have. And yeah, it's really cool. And also come with a stand and whatever. But yeah, let's bust this thing open and see what we All got. Alright, so here we have the figure itself still in the packaging. And I'm pretty damn impressed with the amount of stuff it came with. Um, This is the only few times where I felt like... Um, Tamashi Web exclusive is actually worth it and he does come with a stand as well And this is pretty cool pretty cool. I like it so far and let's jump straight into the figure and see All right, So we here we have the figure itself and to my knowledge He is exactly the same as the previous release in terms of the body scope and color um, Do let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think the only difference are the accessories um, Anyways, let's just take a closer look at the figure first and I like all the mechanical design over here It reminds me of Iron Man and it's really cool It's a really cool take on the kind of idea like Iron Man like a guy in a suit um, And I heard the manga is really really nice. I don't know anything about a manga, but yeah, he still looks really cool to me um, I just feel like they could have made this guy a little bit more shiny with metallic paint or something But I'm pretty sure this is like um, manga accurate or something his color should look a little bit dull um, from what I remember at least But uh, it would have been nice if they can lit up the eyes a little bit um, That's a pure white just doesn't look that cool to me But yeah, anyways, it looked really cool Maybe if they use like um, the same material as the chest over here like on the eyes But yeah, anyways, let's just jump straight into the articulation and see what we got. all right So the articulation on this guy is actually quite nice um, I spent a little bit of time playing with it before I filmed the video he can look up and down, no problem. He can turn his head, no problem. And the shoulder is where it gets kind of interesting. So instead of using a moving piece, they always do. Um, this whole thing is just one piece, like the shoulder and biceps connected together. Um, it looks really nice, but it does sacrifice some of the articulation. But despite all that, it does have um, bicep swivel. And the range of motion is actually quite nice. You're able to pull off most of the pose you need. Um, for Ultraman, at least. And he does have um, the bicep curl that's really nice it goes up that far um it is kind of robotish so it doesn't go out all that oh actually no it's it goes up really far just kind of stiff i, I didn't want to like stress it and the ab crunch is actually quite nice as well but mine is really really stiff so i don't want to stress it but it's there um and I, one thing i'm going to mention is that you can take off the chest over here and change it to like a thinner chest for him to pull off the signature move um where he shoots like the beam or whatever and the hip you can turn mine is pretty stiff as well and i don't think there's articulation over here um this whole thing yeah i don't think so well, i'm not gonna stress it. it's kind of stiff for me and he has the older pull down hip that's pretty good and yeah he can kick quite well i think and that he has that much bend wait it's really stiff i gotta be really careful okay so that's as much as he can bend and the toe is a hinge there's a hinge yeah that's pretty cool and that's it for articulation and let's jump straight into the accessories all right so for the accessories he came with a pair of style posing hands and these are really cool um it looks like he's ready to fight and just like stretching his finger and yeah i like it all right so next up we have another pair of style posing hand and these are really similar to the previous one i'm just gonna compare it side by side um so one of them i guess is clenching the finger over here Hmm, yeah, and that looks pretty good as well. All right, so next up we have these energy waves and these are probably the coolest accessory I have seen on this guy. And the first release version has different kind of um, energy blades, but this one just looks really, really nice. It's really evil that they did this. But yeah, all you do is you just take this part out and just swap it with the um, energy effect parts over here. It's pretty easy. And let's check out what he looks like with it. Alright, so here we have him assembled with the effect parts and he looks amazing. And I think the effect parts alone, it's well worth the $80 I paid for. 
Well, not really. Screw you, Bandai. Alright, so next up we have his signature move, which is the special beam effect parts, and these are really nice. I like it when Bandai does a translucent plastic like this. It's really, really nice. And um, same goes for um, the beam effect parts. You have to swap out the arm like how we did it with the, the, the blades. And finally, we have to use the alternative chest piece over here so it doesn't hinder the articulation when he's pulling off the move. Let me just show you guys what it looks like with everything. Alright, so here we have him assembled with everything you need for the Ultra to Beam Attacker. I'm, I'm kidding. I don't know what it's called. It's probably called Final Flash, but it's really, really nice. I like it a lot. Alright, so lastly, he comes with the interchangeable head sculpt, and this is probably the main reason why people got the figure. Um, same for me. And he also came with an alternative left hand for him to hold the helmet. Um, it's pretty cool. And I absolutely love the face sculpt. It's really, really nicely done. And everything looks very clean. I like that a lot. Especially like the layers of hair they're doing here. And he just looks really good. And I don't know anything about the character. But I'm pretty sure you guys think this is really cool as well. Hey, hey. So let's jump straight into the size comparison. Alright, so for the size comparison, let's just start with the SH Figures Dragon Ball figures. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you are more familiar with these. And this is what Ultra Man will look like compared to them. He is quite tall though. Alright, so next up we have the SH Figures Avengers. And he is taller than Iron Man. Hmm, that's interesting. Alright, so next up we have some SH Figures Star Wars figures. And the color scheme here is really, really dark. Hmm, and he's as tall as Kylo Ren. They almost have the same shoulder height as well. Alright, so here I have Ultraman compared to some of the more colorful figures I have. And these are Kamen Rider Gaim figures. And yeah, he is really tall compared All right, to them. Alright, so next up we have some Kamen Rider Drive figures. And yeah, they're about the same size as Kamen Rider Gaim. So they're still very short compared to um, the Ultraman. Alright, so next up we have SH figures, Naruto figures. And he is taller than Kakashi. Alright, so next up we have some of my favorite Figma figures. We have Levi, Leonidas, um, Kirito, and Yugi. Yugi is amazing. You should check out my review for Yugi. And I feel like Kirito is a little bit out of date here. But anyways, he is taller than most of the Figma figures. Alright, so next up we have some more random SH figure arts. Uh, we have Lupin the Third. We have Bruce Lee. And I believe Bruce Lee is one of the shortest characters, if not the shortest. And we have Tuxedo Mask, and he is one of the tallest. And we have Red Ranger. But yeah, this is what Ultraman will look like and next year. We have Omega Man and Mewtwo. This is what he will look like next to some of the D arts. Well, technically, they're not called D arts anymore. They're SH figures. Alright, so lastly, we have the Super Action Statues Shu Tsukiyama. I have the review up as well. Do check that out. Um, it's an okay figure, just crap articulation. And I have Jinba from Ultra Act, which is my only Ultra Act figure. I had to like find him from my storage. That was very painful. But anyways, that's it for the size comparison. Let's jump straight into the final. Alright, so for the final thoughts, this guy is definitely a must buy if you're Ultra. Ultraman fan. Even if you're not an Ultraman fan, like I'm not particularly like a big Ultraman fan. Like I still think it's a really good figure. The sculpt is nice, the paint is great, and the accessories he came with is just way too cool to not have. And even if you do own the previous release, I still think it's worth to pick up. And for once, I thought my $80 on Tamashu Web Exclusive is actually well spent. Um, unlike my last review for the SH Vigar's Ultraman Prime figure, that one was just plain horrible. Like it's not worth $80, dude. That thing was worth at most $30. But do let me know in the comments what you think about a figure and Ultra Man in general. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.